Robotar repair of a subxiphoid hernia. Our patient is a 67-year-old male with a multiply recurrent subxiphoid incisional hernia. While he denied pain, he did complain of a progressively enlarging bulge over the last year. Past medical history was significant for hypertension. His BMI was 32. He was a non-smoker. Past surgical history of three previous subxiphoid repair, the first being primary repair without mesh in an open fashion. The second was laparoscopic eye palm. The third was an open onlay. Neither of these past two surgeries did they remove mesh. No history of abdominal wall or mesh infection. In this video, we will highlight tar dissection. We will also detail the development of the retroxiphoidal space to ensure adequate cephalad overlap. We will also discuss and highlight the logistics of the double dog technique. Here is preoperative video of the subxiphoid hernia, which is moderate in size. This is the CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. Because it appeared like on the CT scan that the hernia content listed to the patient's left, I started off with a 5 mm optical trocar technique in the right upper abdomen. After evaluating access, I determined that this trocar was not lateral enough, so I used it as an accessory trocar which we typically do not use. All the robot trocars are separated by 10 centimeters and somewhat favors the left upper quadrant given the subxiphoidal position of the hernia defect. The robot was docked over the contralateral abdomen, again somewhat favoring the left upper quadrant. I performed lysis of adhesions to isolate the hernia defect. Here you can see the previous onlay or an eventrated previous eye palm mesh. This is the xiphoid process. After isolation and complete evaluation of the hernia defect, the posterior sheath is incised and divided off the rectus abdominis muscle. Here we start to see the robust fibers of the transversus abdominis in the upper abdomen. The neurovascular bundles are preserved. Utilizing cautery, the transversus abdominis muscle is divided. As we progress caudally, you can see the posterior leaf of the internal oblique aponeurosis as well as diminution of the transversus abdominis muscle. It is important to divide the transversus abdominis in a downward fashion atop the posterior sheath as opposed to laterally where you can get into an intraparietal plane. With lateral and eventual posterior mobilization, this will result in a massive release of the posterior sheath.
One of the benefits of TAR is being able to get into a retroxyphoidal position. This will create enough cephalad overlap for the placement of mesh. Here you can see me retracting one leg of the posterior sheath. This reveals the retroxyphoid fat pad. With continued cephalad dissection, you can see the central tendon of the diaphragm. Take note of the two legs of the posterior sheath, the second leg which we will dissect later. Cut edge of the transversus on the abdominal wall. Cut edge of the transversus on the posterior sheath. We then measure the length and width of the hernia defect as well as the dissected space from the posterolateral abdomen to the midline. These measurements, we then deploy our mesh to the dissected side. This is a 30 by 35 sheet of proline soft. Suture where we can't feel and tacks where we can. We then place mirror image trocars on the contralateral abdomen and then undock the robot. Here's an external view of the trocar positions. All cords and camera are taken off the patient and placed on a Mayo stand. The patient is turned approximately 180 degrees. And the robot is redocked. Contralateral dissection is performed in a similar manner. Lateral to medial dissection facilitates division of the transversus abdominis muscle. Here you see blunt dissection of the transversalis and the peritoneum off the transversus abdominis muscle. We then complete retroxyphoidal dissection. The retroxyphoidal fat pad along with the posterior lamina is dissected dorsal to the siphoid process and sternum, creating a large pocket for adequate cephalad overlap. Given the tension-free nature of reapproximation of the posterior sheath, we utilize running PDS suture exactly like we do in an open fashion. We stop at the halfway point and then continue in a caudad to cephalad direction. The two sutures are then tied together. We then unscroll our mesh and secure it to the posterior lateral abdominal wall. The linea alba is restored by reapproximating the anterior sheath. We take a bite of the hernia sac and subcutaneous tissue in order to incorporate that within our defect closure. This will hopefully obliterate the dead space anteriorly, reducing the risk of seromas. We have decreased pneumoperitoneum to 8 millimeters of mercury.
Here you see the linea alba is restored and the rectus is back to where it's anatomically and physiologically supposed to be. Day number one, how are you feeling? I'm feeling fine. Feeling good? Yes. Can you cough for me? <coughs> Again? <coughs> Very good. Again? <coughs> so his hernia went up from xiphoid, just below the xiphoid, and his incision extended uh, down just above his belly button. Your mesh is goes from here to here and up to essentially your heart here and down to about here. Okay. Um, I have one drain. It looks like it's serious sanguinous. He's gonna go home with that drain. Uh, what, did you, what did you take for pain meds today? Uh, Percocet. No Toradol? No, no. No IV stuff? No. How many Percocets have you taken? Uh, one. And you've been walking? Yes, I've walked three times today. Oh, that's great. Here's before and after video showing a re-approximated abdominal wall.